So, hello. Um, so my name is David, yes, working at Microsoft Corp. Um, and I'm, I wanted to, to, to check if it was possible to do something as a web developer um, to try to reduce the carbon footprint. So I decided to name this session Building Grid Web, uh, web Apps, even if Asim just explained before that grid doesn't mean the same thing for everybody, but you got the idea is how to optimize maybe what we are doing as web developer and reduce the carbon footprint of what we are doing. So it's, I'm going to share the story, how, how I've been working on that. I have really no cl clue at the beginning. I'm working with a colleague at Microsoft France named Pierre, Pierre Lagarde, and we wanted to check if it was possible to reduce the footprint of PWA. And I started doing some researches and this is uh, the outcome of those researches. So the agenda would be, why should we matter, you know, building uh, a PWA that could be more green or more efficient? Then we will see on which kind of devices the PWA uh, are running. Um, so are, are they going to run, you know, on on smartphone, desktop, and what the impact we can have there? Uh, we will see a bunch of tooling I've been able to find to measure the energy consumption of a web app. And at last, I've done a couple of benchmarks using those tools um, to check if it was you know, relevant to try to optimize the PWA, what could be the impact on energy consumption. And I will finish for idea I've got for the future because, well, I, I haven't managed to, to check everything I wanted. So I'm going to share those ID and maybe some of you will be able to share uh, your thoughts there. So why should we bother about PWAs? Well, I think that you all know that web apps are everywhere. <laughs> all the time we are using web apps, we tend to even to forget about that. Uh, but there are three main sources of energy for, uh, for web apps uh, and for PWAs. Um, obviously, we talk about hosting just before. So where are you going to host your um, the, the server uh, that's going to serve your PWA could uh, have already an impact. When you, then you will have the quantity of data you're going to transfer on the network infrastructure. So you can act on hosting because it's up to you to choose the best hoster to your, that is the, the more, most efficient. For network infrastructure, it's more difficult to be able to impact that as a web developer. Uh, so we cannot really try to act there. And for the client, this would be the main center of interest today is can we really modify our client code uh, of our PWAs to be able to be more efficient? So I think Asim already shared this site, um, we, who is, which is really uh, interesting. France is well known to be uh, low carbon because we have a lot of nuclear, you know, uh, electricity being produced by nuclear plants uh, compared to our neighbors that are using more uh, you know, coal or, or, or uh, you know, less efficient uh, energy. Um, so first, if, if, if you're living in Europe, like or in one of those countries, it may be a good idea to think about using France uh, uh, in a way to, to store your, uh, your data. So if you're using Microsoft Azure, for instance, we've got data centers in France. If you're using AWS, same, they've got data center in France. So um, then you need to think also about if you put that in France and you're living like in Russia, we need to it, we need to evaluate if it makes sense because then you will more use the network infrastructure and you will lower down the latency. So, but it's interesting to see that at the beginning, just for hosting, uh, you can already make some choices that can impact the the carbon footprint of your PWA. But I would like. As I'm not a huge expert in this area, and many other speakers will talk about, you know, the cloud part. Um, I will focus more on on the client part, and for that, um, I like to talk about why should we work on PWA. So they are highly used on desktop web app. Uh, so we recently shared that um, on the the percentage of, of of usage of an app on a desktop could go up to sixty percent on on in a web browser. So meaning that the user, the Lambda user, is going to spend a lot, most of his time in the browser. So if you are a web developer, <laughs> this is where uh, you can uh, act to reduce the footprint. And it's more and more popular on smartphone, even if on smartphone, a lot of people are using native apps rather than uh, web app. But we know that PWA, progressive web app, can really uh, be close to the native experience. And more and more PWA are coming on Android 
at least, and a, let, uh, a bit less on, on, on iOS. So service worker, if you don't know what a service worker, uh, when you're building a progressive web app, is a, a small piece of JavaScript that lives um, uh, between you know, the, the, the clients and, and the backend. So it live, it's being run on the client, but it's like a proxy that's going to catch every request. And then you will be able to have a smart cache uh, that can improve the performance, enable offline, but also going to reduce the network bandwidth. And then it's going to help to build more efficient uh, app, web app, uh, for again, to save some energy. So first, uh, let's review the, um, the various uh, devices where uh, you can run uh, PWAs. So it was stupid jokes like you can use the same with Chrome inspect devices. So it's something that you usually use when you connect your uh, smartphone to uh, uh, to your PC to debug it. So uh, and I wanted to really understand what was the main source of energy on both worlds like desktop and smartphones. So I was thinking like that. In my mind, there was uh, the usual suspects. So the usual suspects are, well, the CPU, GPU, network, sensors, and screen. So I don't know if you know this awesome movie, but um, I've put this, <laughs> the, the, the most impactful on, on, the, on the bad guy. Um, and I wanted to really understand um, where, where, where is the energy lost, and can I um, act on the specific, you know, hardware part as a web developer. So let's start by the desktop. So obviously it's going to depend um, on the type of CPU you're using. So if you're using a low-end CPU or high-end CPU, it's going to vary a lot. So, um, but it goes from 55, you know, watts up to 150 watts. Uh, so the CPU is going to consume a lot of energy on desktop. So we could already guess that, uh, but it's, this, this is where we need to then improve our code. And for the motherboard, um, which contain, you know, the network uh, interface going to contain um, the Bluetooth, Wi-Fi most of the time, sometimes a video card also. So um, we see that it's going to consume less than a CPU. So if it's a regular motherboard, it could go up to 40 watts. And if you are a hardcore gamer, your motherboard will consume more energy. So this is the second one. So, but this is where we're going maybe to try to act at the network level. This one was interesting to my point of view. Uh, I was thinking like, if I'm consuming more memory, I am going, am I going to consume more energy? So um, I'm, I'm not sure about all, you know, uh, assumption that I'm doing. So as I tried, I was trying to measure energy in the second part of the, of the presentation, but it looks like that if you have like a single, you know, um, uh, memory, um, you know, of eight, meg eight gigabytes, and then you double that, it's not going to consume more, more, more energy. So it doesn't mean, for instance, I've got 64 <laughs> gigabytes on this machine. So with two uh, slots being used, it's, it's not supposed to consume more energy if I would have 16 gigabytes. So it means that Maybe this is not where we should optimize for the green part. We know that we should pay attention to memory for sure. Um, and using more memory will less use disk. So it's, it could be an interesting trade-off. And But compared to CPU, you see that memory is not going to consume a lot of energy. And even more compared to the GPU. <laughs> so GPU are more and more you know, available, on obviously, uh, in dedicated way on PC, but also on smartphones. And, as we slowing down the CPU, you know, um, in, increase in, in power because of the Moore law uh, that's slowing down, we are using more and more the GPU to, to use some specific task. And this GPU could consume a lot of energy. So for instance, the latest NVIDIA R R RTX cards could consume up to 350 watts, uh, if, if not overclocked, of, of course. But most of the time for low-end graphics card, it, it would vary from you know, you see 25 up to 86. Um, so you need to pay attention on are you going to use the GPU. For the hard drive, it's interesting. What we, I think we all knew that SSD is consuming less energy than uh, a regular uh, magnetic hard drive. Um, and you can see that except for 3.5 uh, inches hard drive, um, it's not really relevant maybe to spend time 
trying to optimize uh, your your the the usage of, of it to save some energy compared again to CPU and GPU. Uh, but still, it's interesting to see that everybody using SSD now is going to have better battery life than a regular hard drive. And uh, at last, one of the most consuming uh, source of energy. So this is my my beautiful screen I've got in front of myself today, which is a white screen. This is not. Uh, green at all. Um, so it's consuming a lot of energy. It can consume more than 100 watts. Um, it's not the highest consuming screen I found. I've got a list there. I was I was trying to ev evaluate the number of energy being used by various uh, monitors. So it can switch from 20 watts approximately to more than 100. So it's high source of energy. Unfortunately, as a web developer, we have almost no control on that. And we'll see it's the same on smartphones. So um, it's more the user himself that needs to pay attention to what he's paying. Let's switch to smartphone now. Uh, so to check if if we can do a parallel. Um, so smartphones are different, obviously, because the screens are going to be smaller, and then you have a mobility experience. So in case of smartphones, uh, we can see that when we are in airplane, so the the network stack is being you know uh, shut down. Uh, you know you're not using any kind of cellular connection or Wi-Fi. Um, the most important source of energy will come from the system on chip, so which uh, which is a CPU, GPU, and several you know hardware being stored there. The RAM also um, can use a little bit of memory, but you see still really not that high like like on PC. Um, and others could be like the rest of the of the of the, of the smartphone. When you start to enable like 2G, 3G, or Wi-Fi connections, you see that the, the energy is going to really increase a lot. So um, the first time I've seen these graphics, I was saying like, why well, I, sh I shouldn't maybe use Wi-Fi? But we should not think like that because it's going to to, con to consume more energy in a very specific, you know, smart, smart amount of time. So maybe I will use more energy, but I will download so much faster the data, data I need that will be more efficient at using 3G. Uh, on the longer term. So we will see that later on, but it's not because at the specific moments you're going to consume more energy that you are less efficient. And this is something that I understood while preparing this session. So I was thinking about also, you know, the sensors, accelerometer, gyroscope, and stuff like you've got on the smartphone and you usually don't have on, on the PC or Mac. Um, you don't have to to pay attention to that because I was thinking, would it make sense to lower down, um, you know, the the speed at which I'm going to get the data of the accelerometers? But it's not going to to change very a lot of stuff on the energy consumption. So let's forget about sensors. And this is the, the usual suspect. The bad guy is on the left. So you see that. CPU, GPU, and the cell, so the, the cellular, you know, connection to connect to the 4G or 5G now uh, networks are the highest source of energy consumption after the backlight. So if you have a LCD screen, so the LCD screen itself, as you can see there, is not consuming that amount of, of energy while well, it's consuming like a bit more than the CPU, but the backlight is really what is going to consume much more energy if you're using an LCD screen. If you're using OLED screens, not the same technology, so you don't have backlight, uh, but you see, we cannot act on backlight as web developers. And while doing some researches, and I'm really sharing that with you, that the, the true story, uh, I found these graphics. And the first time I've, I've seen this graphic, I say, wow, it seems like blue light is consuming more energy than green light or red light. So I start to think about how, I, 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 I don't know how this is possible. So I try to rethink really about you know the wave of the lights and and maybe it's linked. So I've been able to find this Planck equation. So the, it's a way to measure the energy of photons. And as it's uh, based on the wavelengths, um, uh, it's, it's going to explain why blue energy is consuming is consuming more energy than green or red. I said, wow, maybe it's something I can do as a web developer is try to optimize my web design to less to use less blue energy and maybe more uh, red colors. So let's try to me measure that. So is it useful? So sometimes you may ask some question yourself and you need to check if it's <laughs> interesting or stupid. So I was in this state. 
And I can give you the answer. The answer is no, this is not useful, except maybe to be fun during uh, parties and, and try to, to impress people. Um, but I really wanted to check that. So I've been building a, a simple web page that's going to put in full screen uh, background color to blue and the, on the other side, the background color to red. And I wanted to measure that. So I've been using uh, this thing. So it's a watt meter. Um, and I've been uh, measuring that on uh, an LCD laptop and on the Samsung devices using uh, OLED. So the output is that. So using OLED, so OLED don't have backlights. It's a self-emitting technology. If I'm using a full, a full screen using the blue color, you see I, I was consuming. So the smartphone wasn't doing anything. So it's, it's using a very low quantity of energy. The watt meter was displaying 1.3 to 1.4. 0.4 watts. Red screen was consuming a bit less of energy, 1.2 to 1.3. But it's, well, you see the difference is not that high. And for black screen, it was using uh, 0.9 to 1. So it means that if I'm shutting down completely, you know, the screen. In the case of a no LED screen, you're going to lower down the consumption. In the case of the LCD, LCD doesn't work the same way. You need backlight. So when I was running my web page with pure blue, I was consuming between 13 to 14 watts, same for red and same for black screen. So um, it's only because the bike light is always enabled in a way, and this is really the, the, the element of hardware consuming the most of the energy. So don't bother to try to, to modify the color of your website. This is an idea I had, and I've been able to verify that this is uh, useless. So I wanted to check uh, a, a blog of, of an, a gaming influencer I, I like in France named uh, julienchez.com. Uh, and he's got like a black theme and a white theme, uh, so light and dark theme on his website. So I wanted to check if it's going to impact uh, the energy consumption because this is something I had in mind too. So using the static page, so if you load the page and do nothing on it, the light theme seems to consume a bit more of energy than the dark theme on, on an OLED screen on my Samsung S8, but you see that this is very small. And, and when I start to scroll on the website, so you use the web page in a normal way, no difference, uh, no difference at all. So I was a bit sad because I was hoping to be able to act on the screen itself, but you can, the dark theme going to save a little bit of energy, so maybe you, we can do it, but this is not where we, we can have the most of, uh, of, of the impact. Once again, same website being reviewed on my uh, Surface Laptop 2, which got a LCD screen, uh, and no difference at all between the light theme and the dark theme. So something we need to find something else. So uh, on the same, uh, so I've been sharing the, the studies, you know, um, at the bottom of the slides. And what, the, what they were saying at the end is that OLED display is dependent on the image content you're going to, to, to display, obviously. Like, but you see that in my case, I was a bit sad because it wasn't a huge difference to my point of view. Um, also on LCD-based devices, the, the content has really small or... Uh, a small impact on, on the energy consumption, a little bit, uh, but I haven't been able to measure it during my test. So if you're targeting OLED display, you can act a little bit on your web app, but don't expect tremendous differences. At last, on devices, something really important I found during the studies, and we'll be able then to, to switch to, um, to the review of the various um, tools to, to measure that. You can see that if you're playing a low quality video, on a, on, a, on a smartphone compared to a high quality video, if you're using the GPU, so if you're using hardware decoding, it's not going to change a lot the energy consumption. You see this is 200 there. So um, meaning that the GPU will still be around 100. Um, it's close to 100 and it was like a bit over 50 uh, milliwatt being used between hardware decoding on high quality video and low quality video. But then have a look to the CPU if you're using the software decoding. So let's say that you're using a codec that is not hardware decoded by the, by, by the smartphone. Um, then you will have the CPU to do the job of decoding. And then the energy consumption is going to go super high. Um, because uh, if you ask the CPU to manage more data, obviously it's going to increase in energy consumption. So this is very important to take into consideration when you have web app using media video content 
you need to pay attention to the quality of it. Do you really need like 4K? And we will have some benchmark at the end. And pay attention to the codec you're using because otherwise you will increase a lot the CPU consumption on the uh, user device. So now let's uh, see the available tooling I've been able to, to find um, from hardware to software. Um, the first one is very simple to use. It's relatively cheap. It's like 25 euros maybe, um, or dollars, probably the same price. Uh, to be able to use it, you need to have like either your smartphone or laptop to be fully charged because I've discovered that if you try to measure the energy while uh, the adapter is charging your laptop or smartphone, obviously you're going to consume the maximum of energy of the adapters. So you need to wait for the uh, battery being filled at 100%. Then you will be able to measure the differences of energy um, with the watt meter. So if you're use, using that on the desktop, you don't have this issue, obviously, because we don't have battery on the desktop. Uh, but pay attention to that. Very easy to use not super precise, um, because um, if you are running a task during you know, less than a second, you won't be able to see any difference on, on the watt meter. Obviously, um, the Windows Task Manager can also help you, because you will be able to see the CPU usage and the GPU usage. So you can even go a step down. Like in my case, I was trying to identify the specific tab I was trying to review, and you can see the amount of GPU usage. So, and we will see that this can have a high impact on energy consumption as well as CPU. Um, and then you have also a new, some new columns in the latest version of Windows that is the power usage and the trend. So you will be able to check in an easy way, but in a very high level way too, uh, how your current web app is being optimized for power usage just by going into the task manager. I don't know if you know that, but in, in Edge and Chrome too, uh, if you're pressing Shift uh, Escape, you can have also the browser task manager that's going then to provide you some other detail like the amount of memory being used. But we've seen that it shouldn't really impact the energy consumption. Um, and then the GPU memory, and once again, the CPU time. So the network too, I found that the network is not super precise. So uh, it's not really easy to use the network in you know, the column to be able to check the amount of data being sent and energy being used. But it's a way to, to first check um, how your web app is, is running. Of course, you have um, well-known tools like Lighthouse. Lighthouse is going to give you uh, insight on the performance of your web app. But like shared before, performance also is correlated to, uh, to uh, energy also efficiency. So meaning that if your web app is super slow because you haven't optimized it, it's going to use a lot the CPU in a, in a bad way, it consumes some energy uh, for where you, where you could have optimized it to consume less energy. So Lighthouse is not designed for green reviewing, but it could be also a first step to help you. I wanted to use Android Studio too, because Android Studio can uh, have an energy profiler, so to, um, to analyze APK. Um, on pwbuilder.com, I can generate APK for PWA to be able to push the PWA to the Play Store. So I wanted to test it. Unfortunately, you cannot attach uh, to uh, a trusted web activity, which is a special type of APK uh, to push PWA on the Play Store, because you, um, you should attach to a process you're, uh, you've been building. So if I'm building an Android app, I can you know, inject a debug symbol and be able to attach on it and finally measure the energy consumption. Uh, and Android Studio doesn't seem to be able to um, to attach to Chrome or Edge or whatever browser on, 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 on an Android device. At least I haven't been able to find a way to do it. So if you know how to do that, I would be interested because otherwise Android Studio seems to have a great way to, to do uh, energy uh, profiling. I've been finding uh, this one really cool uh, being done uh, in France, I guess, by someone uh, following me on Twitter. It's Green Spector. Um, so it's the same principle as PW Builder. You enter a URL and it's going to do a, a review of your website, like Lighthouse or many other sites uh, doing the same uh, approach. 
And then you will receive uh, over email a report going to share the impact of your website on, on battery life. So I've been reviewing my own project, PW Builder. Seems that I'm not that bad. So um, so it's a very interesting way to to review uh, our, um, your energy consumption. And, and uh, I'm sharing the link there if you'd like to play with it. Another idea I had was maybe I can use the battery API available in the browser itself. Uh, because uh, Chrome uh, Edge and other Chromium browser got it. Uh, um, uh, Firefox used to have also an approach uh, when they were building uh, the Firefox, uh, Firefox OS. Unfortunately, uh, I was a bit sad to discover that the, um, the precision of the um, level of battery is, is not good enough to be able to evaluate you know, uh, our, the, the amount of energy I'm losing on doing a specific task. Uh, because you see that is going to change from uh, a high value to another high value. So I don't, I cannot measure in a in a precise precise way um, what my code is doing. Otherwise, it would have been cool to put some timestamp, like let's do like an, something I I know is going to take a lot of CPU, maybe or GPU. Start the you know the the battery manager uh, record the state of the battery, and then at the end record the state of the battery. Do differences and be able to measure the energy being spent. But unfortunately, this is not useful in this case. But maybe there is other useful way to use the get battery. We will talk about that at the end. At last, this is a tool that I've been using for doing some benchmark. I don't know if you know that, but on a Windows machine, and, and same for uh, other OSs, I guess, um, you, the, the OS can tell you where you're spending the most energy. So in my case, apparently, you know, when I took this screenshot, it was in Microsoft Edge and Microsoft Outlook. Um, so how do we do that? We're using a tool named Power CFG, and if you run this tool uh, using this command line, and if you go on the blog uh, Asim shared just before, there's also an article explaining you how to measure the energy consumption of an application, not specifically a web app, but of an application. And I've been using this uh, approach to measure the energy spent uh, by Microsoft Edge in my case. Uh, to try to measure the number of joules being consumed by the various um, benchmark I've been doing. So let's jump into the, the benchmark and see if I've been able to save some energy. So let's start by trying to optimize at the CP level. So we've seen on the, you know, on the hardware device inspection that the usual suspects are the screen itself, and I cannot really act on that because of the backlight the CPU, the GPU, and the network, like the cell or Wi-Fi. So let's measure, I wanted to measure like WebAssembly versus JavaScript, because we know that WebAssembly can be much more quicker than uh, JavaScript. So I've been modifying a sample that exists uh, already, trying to do face tracking using an AI, you know, deep learning type uh, uh, algorithm. Um, and to track my face using the webcam. I cannot use it because I'm currently using the webcam to, to broadcast that, but I've been doing a screenshot. Um, you can see that using pure JavaScript, I've been able to recognize my face at, at two frames per second, so it's super slow, and it was using uh, approximately 10 watts when I was doing that. So during when I was uh, doing this, uh, using this web page, 10 watts was being used to have two FPS. Switching to WebAssembly, I've managed to jump to 30 FPS, so much more uh, faster. So it means that I'm using much better the, um, the hardware, but I'm consuming like almost 18 watts. Um, so I was surprised. So I, I was thinking, so maybe is WebAssembly more efficient than JavaScript? Because sure, I have a much better experience, uh, but then it means that uh, I'm consuming more energy. So. In this typical case, I think it's, it's relevant to, to you try to reach the 30 frames per second with a bit more of energy rather than two frames per second, but it wasn't a good conclusion at, at this stage. So I've been using another uh, WebAssembly benchmark, uh, a, a benchmark that's going to do various uh, tasks to, to generate PDF, to search for text inside a PDF, you know, various types of... Um, office type of, of task you could do on, on your machine. And this one was much more interesting. So first, 
when I was executing, executing the same benchmark, doing the same task between JavaScript and, and WebAssembly, WebAssembly was much faster, which is good news, like, like we've seen for the video um, uh, benchmark. And the range, so this is where it's difficult when you use that, because you, you don't, I don't have on this specific device a way to ask for how many energy have you been using during this amount of time. So I have to look at it and try to evaluate. But what I've seen is I was consuming between 21 to 25 watts using JavaScript. There are some higher peaks on the web assembly, but generally the average usage was lower on web assembly. And then I tried to do something that is stupid, is trying to multiply the approximative average usage by um, by the time being used to say that even if I'm using more energy during a less amount of time, um, what's, what's really important is the amount of energy consumed in total. Um, so this is not any kind of units, it's a fake unit. That's why I've been using power CFG that's going to give me the number of joules being used during a specific task. And in this case, I think that I've been using less joules, so I've, I've been able to better use the energy and be better for the planet by using WebAssembly for this specific task rather than JavaScript. So good news, WebAssembly could be a good friend to improve the uh, carbon footprint of our PWAs. CPU, then I was thinking, we know that JavaScript is not good for CPU because it's monothreaded by nature, but we have web workers, which is, well, something not as good as multi-threading, but at least we can start to better use the, the cores. And I wanted to check if it was the case regarding energy. Um, so I've, uh, I've been using this uh, ray tracing tool on my Surface Laptop 2. So my Surface Laptop 2 got four cores, uh, which are hyper-thread, hyper -thread, which means that I've got eight logical cores. So what I've been doing is I've been executing um, the rendering of an image. So I've been modifying this specific demos to compute a, a 4,000 by 4,000 uh, pixels image. It took 31 seconds to execute using one worker. So using like JavaScript by default, if you want to. And it took 10 seconds only to be executed on eight workers. Now the question is, was it better uh, regarding energy? Um, so. Obviously, the approximate uh, average of, of energy consumed on my watt meters was 35 watts compared to 19 watts. You could say, wow, so you, it means that you're going to consume more energy. Um, but the truth is that I've been able to better use the hardware. Like Asim was explaining before, what is really important too is to use the hardware in the most efficient way. And asking to power CLG, it, it looks like they've been using less energy in final. Uh, so 83 joules compared to 20 uh, to 222 joules, because even if I've been using in a peak more energy, I've been using it during a less amount of time. So I was more efficient. So once again, web worker could help you to build the more efficient web app. So video quality. So we've seen that codec and the video quality could have an impact uh, on, on your, uh, on your consumption of energy of your web app. So what I've been using with YouTube, <laughs> so some video I've got myself on YouTube in 4K and some other uh, 4K uh, 60 frames per second videos. And this one was interesting. So um, as long as you're using a codec that is being going to use a GPU, um, it, switching from you know the lowest quality up to 4K, I've seen two watts of difference of usage. So it could be interesting because saving two watts on every machine could have a huge impact. Uh, we can see that the GPU usage is going on. So I've been using the Windows Task Manager for that. So it was super simple. And it's it means that the more the, the more you will use the GPU, the more you will increase, obviously, the energy consumption. So you need to pay attention because maybe my GPU was strong enough to handle that. But maybe on the lower GPU, I would use much more energy. Um, on on 60 frames per second, I wanted to check if the frame rate could have an impact. It doesn't seem to be the case up to uh, full HD. Uh, reaching 4K, I've, I think that the GPU usage has, has more than double, which is relatively logical. And then the, the, the number of watts being used also increased a little bit. So it means once again, don't provide 4K 60 frames per second to your user if they don't have like the screen to display it or you know if you got a, a smartphone 
it's meaningless to send a 4K uh, video to that. And YouTube obviously is generating that for that, is managing that for that with the auto settings. And I wanted to share something. That, so we have a tool uh, um, named E3 for energy estimation engine um, that is being run on, you know, on, on, on the user machine to evaluate the energy being spent by some app. And this is an application we've got uh, uh, in the Microsoft Store uh, using web technologies that is doing streaming. And we see that uh, before the COVID you know, crisis, well, the, the amount of energy was, you know, like, like that. And it started to increase during the, you know, the, the quarantine because a lot of people were stuck at home on watching video content. And this is where some people and some, you know, um, streamers uh, decided to lower down the quality of videos to avoid having network, you know, congestions. And we see that the energy being used by those applications on the machine decreased, meaning that it's correlated, it's directly correlated, the, the, the quality of the video with the energy being spent uh, on the device. So take that into consideration. Um, maybe you don't, you don't always need 4K or even full HD uh, to watch some of the video content. Another interesting test, and we are almost done, um, resolution zoom. And this one was fun. So this is a WebGL game I've been building with, uh, so I've been uh, working in the past on the WebGL engine named BabylonGS, uh, and now I've been a, a stupid WebGL game. And uh, you see that I'm currently having 33 watts being used. If I'm, you know, zooming, uh, uh, increasing the zooming level to four, uh, 400 percent, I'm lowering down the number of watts being used. Um, you see that. It could up to 50 watts, and now I'm going to go back uh, in history, and the, the the more resolution I'm generating, so what the zoom level is doing in my case on my WebGL canvas is going to modify the internal uh, rendering resolution. So this is something a lot of games are doing. If you have a 4K screen, it's, if it's too complex to render a 4K image, you're going to render a full HD image, for instance, and do an upscaling of it. This is exactly what the zoom is doing on the browser. And it was fun to see that lowering down the resolution, internal resolution, was directly impacting the, the energy being shown on, on the watt meter. So it means that, once again, an easy way to lower down the energy is to reduce the the, the resolution being used for your canvases. So it could be 2D canvases or WebGL canvases. Maybe it will be a little bit more pixelized on the screen, but then you will use less energy. At last, service workers. So this one was <laughs> more difficult to evaluate. Um, uh, so my game, um, I don't know if I can show you my games, but my game is um, super simple. So I can launch it. And you see, you've got this loading phase when I'm going to load some resources. And when it's ready, it's going to, to switch to the, to the main game. And this is my, my, my stupid game. Um, so I wanted to uh, evaluate how to optimize this specific part using service workers. Um, so I don't want to measure the energy spent by the WebGL rendering, so just the loading phase. Um, so during the very first launch, um, the Power CFG, the so Power CFG can tell you the total number of energy used, and then on the CPU, on the network, you know, on the various interesting parts. So it took 22 joules uh, to to use the network stack to load my content, and during the full sequence, it took 400 and two uh, and 23 joules because. It takes much time to load the data from the network, but then I've got my spinning, loading, you know, um, a logo that's going to consume, in fact, much more energy than the network stack itself because it's going to use already the GPU and the CPU. So the, the longer the loading sequence is, the higher energy you're going to consume, not because of the network, but because of the display itself. Um, so once everything was in cache, uh, the network stack was almost at zero because you always like a bit of you know, HTML and CSS to download. So I mean that the, the launching sequence was much more efficient when everything was in the cache, but I, I haven't really optimized the network usage uh, because I've been able to reduce the 
the launcher you know, time rather than optimizing a lot the energy because of the network. So uh, we've been doing something else. Uh, we've got like um, a, a small a sample application with some DRM content. We wanted to test if PWA were, was able to display offline DRM content. So we've been using this famous uh, free video. And so what I've been doing, I've been using this PWA and measuring like playing two minutes of DRM content while I was online. And the total a number of energy being used during those two minutes was almost 500 joules with only 30 with 31 joules being used just by the network playing the same uh, two minute video uh, in airplane mode so without the network stack enabled i've been able to save uh, uh, 12 percent of energy thanks to the service worker so in conclusion it means that we can have some impact of energy on the cpu level thanks to web assembly in certain cases thanks to, um, to web workers sometimes. Uh, changing the colors or back theme, white theme, white theme doesn't going to change a lot. And service worker can help a lot on saving some energy on the network stack. Plus it's going to save also some energy on the network infrastructure and the server itself where your uh, all your data are, are stored. So service worker is maybe the one of the most interesting technology that we can use in, in PWA today. So some idea for the future, because I didn't have the time to test it. I don't know if SVG images, for instance, are more efficient than bitmap or big images compared to small images or using lazy loading. Is the fact that using lazy loading is more efficient? I'm not sure because then you need maybe to do, I don't know, more network uh, requests rather than a big network request. I don't know, I, I would need to measure that. I don't know if you've got idea on your side. I was thinking maybe also about adapting dynamically the behavior of my web app by uh, based on where I'm currently based using so the the map we've seen at the beginning. So let's say that this PW is being currently run in in France. We know that it's more efficient on the carbon level. Maybe I can do more network requests compared to being hosting in Germany, or maybe I can use more often the service worker in Germany rather than uh, France. So. Maybe it's a stupid idea, but something I was thinking about. Using the battery APIs to this time propose a kind of um, efficient design. It could be a sustainable design. So maybe avoiding auto launching videos, maybe trying to lower down automatically, automatically the, the, the type of quality video to be used based on the current level of API, because I can know that I, I'm almost uh, have no more battery. And then um, I like to, to check if it would possible to create some CSS maybe framework or GS framework to help people building sustainable PWA. So for CSS, I'm not convinced because CSS is a lot uh, on the rendering of the image. But sometimes CSS can also use GPU based on the way that you're going to define your CSS. It will be either computed on the CPU or GPU. So maybe we can build some CSS framework that are more uh, uh, energy efficient. This is something I haven't been able to, to check. And I've stopped there. So now I can thank you for listening while I try to do uh, while benchmarking PWAs. And I think we can have questions, but I'm not sure.